and welcome to the Passion Pitches here at the 30 Goals Conference. Um, we have a lot of great speakers on deck with a lot of great information for you. So hopefully you all are ready to t soak in all of this passion. Like I can hardly wait. I'm just so super duper excited. So a little bit about the Passion Pitches. Um, my name is Sarah Thomas, and I'm the founder of the EduMatch Project, which seeks to connect educators globally along similar interests um, in order to meet the needs of students all around the world. So out of this project um, came a collaboration with Rob McTaggart and Craig Kemp, and we created the Uber EduList where educators could, um, could pitch their ideas in order to get support or get a broader audience for it. So. I just feel so blessed and so happy that Shelly um, Shelley had contacted me to do this EduMatch Passion Pitch project. Um, so we have, we have five dynamic speakers for you, as well as a keynote that's just going to blow your mind. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce our keynote speaker for today. Y'all may have heard of him because this, this young man is doing amazing things. So our keynote speaker is Joshua, and at the tender age of five, Joshua became passionate about helping those in need. He believes that no child should ever go hungry and that everyone should have access to one of the basic necessities of life, food. Almost 10 years later, Joshua and his organization, Joshua's Heart Foundation, along with many committed volunteers, is working to stomp out worldwide hunger one community at a time. To date, Joshua's Heart Foundation has distributed over 1 million pounds of food to those in need, and they've coupled that assistance with teaching some recipients how to prepare healthier, healthier meals. Joshua hopes to touch the hearts of young people everywhere so they can be inspired to make a difference in the lives of those less fortunate. His site is joshuasheart.org, facebook.com uh, forward slash Joshua's Heart Foundation. He's on Twitter at Joshua's Heart and on Instagram at Joshua's Heart. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Joshua. We can't wait to hear about your awesome, awesome project. Thank you. So, um... As she said, my name is Joshua Williams. I am president and founder of Joshua Star Foundation. It is an effort that I started 10 years ago around that. Um, and its its whole purpose is to inspire people, bring back um, kindness into this world, and really just make a change in any way that we can. And so we've been doing this again for the last 10 years. And as a matter of fact, we are celebrating that this September um, on the 19th. We're having our... It's not exactly a gala, but it's an award ceremony, um, kind of like the Oscars event. And we're celebrating our 10 years and just everybody who's helped us to this point and helped make this day, this, you know, where we are now possible. Um, so Joshua's Heart started 10 years ago, and it really all started with a $20 bill. And um, my grandmother, as a matter of fact, she gave me the $20 bill, and I was on my way to church one day. And I stopped at the red light, and um, I was in the back seat. And out of the window, there's this homeless man. And I was learning to read at the time, and I was pronouncing all the syllables. And I, it said, need food, no money, lost my job. And I didn't, I wasn't able to fully comprehend why he was asking for money. And to me at the time, I didn't understand why he was in that situation. Um, I asked my mom about it, and she explained to me that he was homeless. And... I still didn't fully understand that he was in need um, until years later when I really, you know, put myself into a bigger way to experience more and learn more about people and how I can make a bigger change. Um, so then, in the end of that experience, I gave the man the $20, and that was the first time that I gave back in, to the community. This was the first time that I really saw that I can make a difference, whether it was big or small. And that's one of the big. That's one of the biggest lessons that we bring with my foundation today, that we spread the message that no matter how old or young you are, you can make a difference in the life of others, whether it's big or small. You can do something about it, and that's something that we really try to focus on. Um, so then, a few weeks later after that, I was watching TV, and there's this commercial about Feed the Children the organization, and basically they had a commercial about the work that they were doing in Africa, and really it just touched my heart and. I, again, was, you know, I didn't, again, understand why people were in that situation. I was confused. And um, after, after me watching more and more videos of that, um, I really just couldn't believe it. And eventually the TV, it said, adopt now. And I ran crying to my mom. Mom, mom, can we adopt all the kids? 
And that's pretty hard to do, though, so we weren't able to do that. Um, but the next step that I went did is I went to my two favorite aunts, and I asked them to help me do something in the community. And at first, they, they were really hesitant, and they kept on being hesitant um, up until the point where I fired them. Um, so I fired them, and I moved on, and I went on to my mom now, and I asked her to help me do something in the community. And um, she, again, she was hesitant at first, but I was very persistent about it. I never gave up. I made sure that if I wanted something, I was always taught at a young age that if I wanted something and I put my mind to it, I could do it. Um, so I made sure, because this is something that I wanted, I focused on it. I made sure that my mom, my mom knew this, and I made her help me. And eventually, after you know weeks of making sure that she knew that I really wanted to do this, begging and nagging her, she gave in. And at first, I think it was just, you know, she wanted to get me off her back, and it was kind of reluctant. But eventually, you know, she saw that I really wanted to do this, and she helped me out. So we organized the family, and we started to cook food. Um, we're Jamaicans, so a lot of jerk chicken and all that. And we would put a lot of that and put it in these takeout containers, um, and we would take it in our car. I wouldn't go to the places where we would go because we, we were giving it to the homeless, and I was young at the time, and it was dangerous, so it's you know a little risky. So um, at that time, I wasn't able to go and you know show my support there. But um, my family would go out, and they would give the food to the homeless. Um, and eventually, you know, it started out small, five, ten people, and eventually, a couple of weeks, it grew to 100, 200 people, 250 each weekend. And um, this was every Saturday, and this was just out of the goodness of our hearts. And this was really the starting of Joshua's heart. This was the roots of what we do today. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually, this transformed into well, our main program now, which is called the distribution program. And this is where we actually distribute food to those who are in need. And um, that's basically what Joshua's heart main program is, and that's what it, it's involved into. Um, so that's Josh to start now. Um, right now we're expanding, we're trying to grow more, um, push our boundaries and really just show people how to be kind and use, use kids as a way to inspire others to make a change. Um, before we actually started giving back and cooking food, um, we looked for a foundation that I could join, something that supported youth and that I could help out in. And we couldn't find any. So after that, we made sure that that's one of our biggest goals. Um, that's one of our roots in the foundation, is focusing on youth and making sure that they're in the community. Not just because they're the leaders of the future, but because it's very important that we teach them how to be kind to each other. And not because they are going to be the leaders of the future, because because they are they're going to be the next adults. And if we make sure that they have that kindness in their hearts, that passion and that purpose that drives them to do good things, then the next generation, we're going to be quite amazing. And, you know, I really want to work on helping our generation be the best that we can be. And really that just starts with ourselves and working together to make ourselves better. So that's something that Joshua started trying to do is really teach kids how to be the best person that they can possibly be, inspire them to change the world with whatever their passions are, whether it be basketball, video games, anything. We help transform that love, that passion for whatever they have and use it to help change the world. Um, and that's one That's one of the things that we try to um, teach our kids. We have um, a program called the Junior Advisory Board, or the JAB, and basically it's a group of kids that we, that we, we have around 68 to 72 in one group. Basically, they are created to teach them how to fund for events, how to fund events on the planet, and basically have a well-rounded event, um, and we do this with three steps um, through three different age groups, and um, we've been doing that for the past seven years, and it's gone great so far. We have kids who starting their own program and really making a difference in the community. Um, so that's what Josh's Heart is right now, um, and again, we're trying to grow, we're trying to expand, do more things, and kind of become more self-sufficient, um, making sure that, you know, donations are con continuously coming in so that we can buy food and give it out to those who are in need. We're trying to transform into a sort of mobile food pantry where we can go around delivering food to those who are in need um, and also an emergency food shelter um, if they need it too. 
Um, and we're trying to transform into different boundaries because over the years I've really gone deep into the roots of what causes hunger and why hunger and is. Program and really make it and um, so the app is right now. That, and again, we're trying to grow. We're trying to expand do more things. I figured out that we kind of figured out that. Um, excuse me. Figured out that we're really trying to um, a, a cycle of poverty, um, and we're trying to break that cycle. It also comes from a lack of awareness throughout people, and really, it's those three things and financial support and um, financial education. We're trying to focus on those four things and really teach people how to be the best person they can be through those things. Um, teaching people about education, well, educating people, and um, really making it so that they can go to college, get a better job, and really make you know more money so that they can support themselves and their family. Also, we're teaching kids um, how to read at an earlier age, um, teaching them to love for reading. And we're also teaching them about financial supporting, um, banking at a young age, because even for myself, I've seen that in high school and in middle school, we don't always learn about some life lessons that we're going to use in the future, uh, how to pay our taxes, different things like that. And when you go into life, it can be confusing. So we're trying to teach some kids that so when they go in, when they're old um, and they're heading into life, you know, they really know how to do that and they can take a huge leap forward then and there. Um, so that's a big thing that we're trying to do. Um, we are currently buying a van where we're able to start our mobile food pantry. And eventually I would love to make that into kind of a fleet of vans, hire people, and really have them go around the community, deliver food and um, whatnot, and really just help out in any way that we can. Um, so that's Joshua's heart. Um, that's what we do. And yeah. That is fantastic. Just kudos to everything that you are doing. You are truly a remarkable young man. And um, I love hearing stories like this. This is just so inspiring. So thank you for bringing your passion to us. And if you all want to help Joshua uh, stomp out hunger, then please visit his website at joshuasheart.org. So thank you again, Joshua, for joining us and for spreading your fantastic message. Um, and I love the fact that you're empowering kids to, to uh, do things as well. Like that is just so, so awesome. All right, so now we're going to shift gears a little bit, and we are going to kick off our passion pitches. So thumbs up from the panel if you're ready. Thumbs up if you're ready. Yay! Okay, fantastic. So we are going to go in order. So we're going to uh, start first with uh, Tammy Neal. And a little bit about Tammy. Very, very happy to, um, to introduce Tammy. She's a good friend of mine. So... A little bit about her while she just gets in position. She is a connected educator. You can find her website at TammyNeal.com. Uh, she loves technology. She's a sponsor of the Beta Club. Uh, she works at, uh, She's a BHS 2014 to 2015 Teacher of the Year from Brantford, Florida. She runs like 50 million uh, Twitter chats. So <laughs> it is great to have Tammy on board with us. Um, so Tammy, if you could please tell us about your passion. Okay. Um, one of my passions is uh, making connections, and another of my passions is game design. I am starting the second year of a uh, game design program at my school, and am very interested in showing my students the power of the collaboration. So I am going to request, let's see here, let's share this for a second. I have... Uh, a small group of second year game design students that I'm hoping to connect with some classes for some collaborative game design. I really want these students to be able to go from start to finish on, on a, designing a game. Uh, I am not putting any restrictions on them. I want them to brainstorm with a class. Um, maybe it's that you want a game designed for your class, let us help you design that game. Maybe you have some game design students that you would like them to work with others. I only have seven or eight students in the year two class and they, they need some fresh ideas. Um, we are 
like I said, in Branford, Florida, you actually have to open the Google Maps, of, go in and zoom in about three times to find my little town. And so I want them to be connected with real world experience. So if you have a game that you would like to have designed for your class, or if you are a game design teacher and you would like to have your students, you know, maybe even doing some blogging with us and talking through the design process of designing some games, maybe even some game design competitions, you know, on a, on a small in-class scale. Uh, I'm just really looking for suggestions, uh, people willing to collaborate, people willing to uh, walk with us through this journey. So that is really what my passion is. I want these students to see, to have an authentic audience that's really important that they be able to um, understand and, and take that communication in, decide what they think that means, share that back out, do the whole design process is important. Their focus this year is on including better sound to the games that they've been writing in the past, but I'm also looking for them to have, like I keep saying, those, those authentic audiences. Those, you know, I can create a game, but if it doesn't have an audience, then it's not really authentic for them and I want them to f create things that people are interested in using uh, whether it's for an elementary class or whether it's for you know something that we have to learn and stretch and grow to learn the concepts that are needed to produce the game that that's amazing to me to get these kids out of their typical routine and experiencing connections from around the world. So that's really what I'm looking for. And um, if you can, please drop me a line. My Twitter handle is TG underscore Neil, N-E-I-L, and would love to be able to connect with you, your classes, your students, and let's see if we can make this world bigger and smaller at the same time. Love it, Tammy. Love that. Absolutely, yes, and an authentic audience is definitely something that kids respond to, like all of us respond to um, when we have an authentic audience. So that is such an amazing uh, passion pitch. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. So we're going to kick it next to uh, Stefan Hughes, and Stefan is based out of Rio de Janeiro. Um, he, he also goes by the name of DefSteph98. He's dedicated through, to professional development through social media. He is interested in music, blogging, sports, movies, and new and exciting things. So welcome, Stefan, and kicking it over to you. All right. Thank you very much, Sarah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, great, great, great. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm just blown by what I've been hearing so far. Very good to be here uh, to be part of this this you know event and to share passions as you say. Right? So um, one of my passions, let's say recent passions now, is teacher training, and it's all about getting teachers to improve. And um, as Sarah said, I'm based in Brazil, so um, people here they don't speak English as their first language. So you might wonder what 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 is this pitch is all about? Uh, it's not working directly with students, but it's going to be working with teachers. Um, and of course, we want to affect the students. We have to affect the teachers. We have to, you know, impact on the teachers to get them to, you know, be involved. So um, my idea, and and it, it came, it stemmed from basically my dealing with a lot of teachers here who uh, have varied levels of proficiency in English. Um, and if we start to think, how many people actually speak English as a first language and speak English as second or foreign or other languages? The numbers are, I mean, off, off the roof, as we say. Huh? We have like a billion people speaking English, either as a foreign or as a second language. So um, these guys, these teachers, are basically the, the, the gatekeepers to a certain extent. They're the ones that are the guardians of the English language. They're the ones that pass on information. Um, so I was, uh, uh, dealing with teachers, it came across to me something like that even though they do proficiency tests, they do international certification, do exams, um, when they get to you know, the classroom and they have to deal with uh, language uh, that they have to help teach uh, students learn English, master English, uh, sometimes they don't have enough. They don't have enough skills with that. Mm -hmm. So um, I thought, hey, why not 
give them opportunity, maybe get some willing volunteers like people like yourselves here and other people who might want to um, team up with some with some teachers. Um, just you know, exchange ideas, just talk a bit, and in the process, um, work on language, work on improving their skills. Because um, PD, it, it would come across as PD, but it's not PD because um, when PD is traditional, it's, it's usually imposed, and teachers don't, teachers are student, but teachers don't like it actually. Um, they don't get most out of it. So, um, I, in my experience, I would just tell teachers, you know, come on, do this, do that. Um, you know, read a grammar book, but you don't, you don't read a grammar book and get language. So, uh, why not use social media, bring it out, give them a chance to, you know, explore, uh, um, or you know, get in touch with lots of people that uh, maybe you know they would know and they would be able to uh, um, have some opportunity to talk to in 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 real context, as we talked about audiences. So I think the audience is, let me just see if I can share the screen. I'm gonna share my screen. Is that okay? Yeah, I can share my screen. Yeah, great. So this is, let me know if you can see that, right? So I'm looking for language coaches who can, um, let's say, help uh, informally help other teachers, um, give them a chance to talk, give them a chance to practice the English. And the system would look basically a bit like this, right? Where there's a five-step process, uh, and they would collaborate on the blog, share the ideas, uh, and move on. So it would be something totally um, from their point of view, what they want to do, and move on. Okay? So that's it. That's my passion for now. And I hope it was something that you know got you interested and got everybody excited and a chance to meet people, different cultures. If you don't want global connections, this is it. This is a chance to meet lots of people. All right? Thank you. All right. Awesome, Stefan. I love that. I love that. Just connecting via social media to help empower teachers. That is amazing. So thank you so much for sharing your passion with us. Uh, so now we are going to go to our next passion picture. We have Leslie. Now Leslie is based out of Georgia. She is an instructional technology coach and a Google education trainer. She's passionate about lifelong learning, teaching, educational technology, world traveling, and her family. So welcome, Leslie. We are so excited to hear about your passion. I'm going to turn it over to you right now. All right, Leslie, for some reason we're not getting audio from you. Could you try to maybe mute and then unmute, and let's see if that that helps. Nope. It's not coming through. Okay, I'm going to ask you a favor. Could you bounce out and then come right back in, and um, in the meantime we'll let, uh, we'll let the next person on the list go, and then as soon as that person's done, then you'll come right back in. Okay? All right, awesome. So we'll see you soon. All right, so we will take a little detour, and we are going now to Jennifer. All right, so Jennifer, let me just go ahead and get you all set up on here. Okay. So, Thanks, sir. Oh, wait. Do, do I hear somebody? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought she came back. But Jennifer is based out of Aurora. And she is a literary consultant for grades 7 through 12. She loves to learn, create, collaborate, and tinker with tech. She's trying to balance work, family, and life. So is that Ontario, Jennifer? Yes, it is, Canada. Wow, Ontario, Canada. So that is fantastic. So we are so excited to hear about your passion. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you, Sarah, um, and so um, thank you for that introduction. I work at the district level, and our districts in Canada are much bigger than yours. Um, so I've been involved in a project involving 104 schools, actually, and school teams from 104 schools um, to build 21st century competencies and uh, student-centered classrooms using technology. And so what I'm passionate about is strengthening relationships with families, um, and especially uh, kids, teachers, and students, and especially parents. And uh, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our initiative and, uh, and the, the idea that I have that I'd love to share. So as part of the initiative, I spearheaded a student ed tech day. Um, it involved engaging kids from our various districts to work in collaboration with the school teams. 
and we had this great event. And at the end of the event, we had all these parents come up to us and say, hey, what about our ed tech day? I would love to learn a little bit more about this. And so it got me thinking. Um, and then soon after, and I don't know if I could share the screen just to show you the pictures here. Um, do you have the, let's see. I think Shelly might be sharing them right now. All right, yeah, Shelly is sharing them from her screen. So um, you can just keep talking because it's, it's okay. on her screen. Perfect. Okay, so anyway, um, you'll see their pictures uh, from a student ed tech day that was organized by a group of teachers at one of our schools um, called St. Stephen. And so it's the screen, the, the slide before that actually. And in a nutshell, the team created a schedule for the entire school to come down to the library in shifts. And there were students from grades three to eight who had volunteered to showcase their tech expertise. Um, and we're teaching these kids and their teachers about some of the technology. And they were so proud of themselves, not just um, teaching, but they were confident. Um, and it was amazing. And we talked afterwards about, what about parents? Where are parents in this loop? And so that's really what got me thinking. And, and I know there was uh, lots of talk with a woman, an uh, Ontario education officer named Donna Fry. We were talking about the idea of intergenerational literacy. And it came from the children's rights in the digital age. Um, which is a great document. And we thought about how we could be doing a much better job helping parents to navigate the digital environment and have communication with kids. Sure, parents get to see their kids' projects at parent night, but when they come to the school for presentations, at least in Canada, in our district, I don't know about yours, but it's usually about cyberbullying and the harmful potential of social media. There isn't a lot of really positive things. Um, and don't get me wrong, I understand that there is a dark side to social media and we have to protect our kids, but it can have such great power, but parents really never get to see this. Um, and I also remember George Kuros once saying that stuck with me, that if people who don't know what a hashtag or a handle is, are they considered illiterate? So how can we build digital literacy with parents? Um, how can we, more importantly, engage young people to participate and drive in conversations with parents about digital literacy. And so what I'm doing is developing a toolkit of ideas for administrators and teachers to promote intergenerational literacy. And it could be as simple as having stu students showcase tools at you know the, the monthly meetings that parent councils have, or something grand scale like hosting your own parent ed tech event, which I'm hoping to do. Um, it's definitely a work in progress, but what I'd love is for people's ideas. Um, there already have been some people who've shared the things that they do to engage parents. Um, Sylvia Tolizano had a speed geeking event, and the details are on jcasttod.com. And uh, Aviva Dunsinger, also from Toronto or Canada, uses parent blogs and, and really builds capacity of parents that way. So. Um, I'd love to have people engage. There's a, a Google Doc um, that or folder that I'd love for, for people to participate in so that we can really engage in partnerships with school and community and work towards everybody becoming digitally literate. Sorry, did I go over my five minutes? No, not at all. This was great, great, great information. And that, that makes so much sense to um, make sure that the parents are, are up to speed on, on top of the digital literacy because what other way could they help their children if they don't know what's going on? So fantastic, fantastic passion pitch. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank you. Kate. Thank you. So let's uh, let's come back to Leslie. Leslie, is your sound working? All right. I'm still not getting audio from you. Um, let me see. I'm wondering if there's something that we could click. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Okay. Um, in the meantime, we will we will try to work on it in the background, but um, we will go to Valerie. So let me go ahead and pull up your info, Valerie. So Valerie is joining us from Atlanta. She's an edupreneur, a technology fanatic, a forever learner, and a disruptor of normalcy within education. So Valerie, thank you so much for uh, for joining us and I'm going to kick it over to you. All right, thank you for having me. Can you hear me okay? Yes, okay. All right, so uh, recently I have um, really been living the, the, the vida loca, if you would, um, through 
social media and connecting with educators around the globe. And so one of my passions or, or projects that I have been brainstorming is putting together, and I'm in the Atlanta, metro Atlanta area, an educational obstacle course. And of course, it's an outdoor educational obstacle course. So where did my inspiration come from? So thinking about the White House initiative um, by Lady Obama, let's move, getting kids up and active, but not only do they need to physically move, we want to go ahead and do things that will captivate them in their minds as well. And so with this educational out obstacle course, we're thinking about ways to activate learning. Too many times we hear the kids talk about how boring school is, they don't want to come, they're not interested, the textbooks, blah, 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 you get it. So how to invigorate kids more is to do things that might intrigue them. And how do we go about doing this? Building teams, getting uh, activities on the outdoor that may be engaging, collaborative, collaborative uh, teamwork, fostering creativity in them, critical thinking. And so I'm going to tell my age a little bit here. I don't know how many of you guys grew up in the 80s, um, and there was that TV show, Double Dare where there were trivia questions and the kids were running crazy and wanting to answer the question, be the first to answer the question, and then you would get um, covered with slime and gook, and, but it was all in fun. Now, I'm not saying that I want to cover people's kids with slime and gook. Mm -hmm. However, um, there are things that I think we can build upon this, and I'm looking for a team to help me get this going. And I don't want it to be just an Atlanta thing. I want it to catch fire and be a global movement. I want teachers everywhere to be hosting the educational outdoor obstacle courses. You, and it will range from K through 12. So you'll have K through 2 competing against each other, grades 3 through 5 competing against each other, grades 7 and 8, and then grades 9 through 12. So you actually have four different heaps of students competing against each other. Now what we do need, we need some major sponsors to come in to make this obstacle course a reality. So when we're thinking about uh, companies like REI that host um, outdoor things, mm -hmm. if you've ever seen the Spartan Race, they have a Spartan race for kids, but what if we just put that on steroids and added critical thinking components to it? What if we, um, you know, got things where kids had to build tasks before they could move on to the next mission? Uh, so we, we need these people to come on board with us. So Microsoft, Google, um, these outdoor companies that could actually build these obstacle course and make it not just for the kids but the families can come in and this could be a Saturday event where they can have a family fun day but it's also educational and so my goal is to inspire kids to learn to activate that desire that may pique their curiosity there may be something that they learn in the course that furthers their investigation I don't know how many of you have seen um, Grant Thompson, the king of random YouTube videos, and he kind of hacks, life hacks things. Well, just think about how interesting and engaging kids, you know, they may find that fascinating. And those kind of things aren't happening in our classrooms. So my educational obstacle course is at ground roots, but I'm looking for a team that can come on board. Let's plan. It doesn't matter where you are. You don't have to be in the Atlanta area. And let's really flesh this out, uh, come up with how this would run, the components, the questions that we would use, the tasks that we would come up with, and let's make it catch fire. Let's make it do what it do, as Ray Charles says. So if you're with me, you can find me on Twitter at IMV Lewis, and I'm excited about this. I would love to hopefully kick off the first one in October on the same day as the National Cardboard Challenge Day. So that will be October 10th of 2015. So if you're with me, I look forward to you connecting with me. Wow, that is fantastic. And you had me going with that Dare Double Dare physical challenge. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Great, great, great passion pitch. So thank you all so much. Um, Leslie, do, do we have you with us? Are you able to hear us? Okay. 
I know that there were some audio issues a little earlier, but hopefully, hopefully we get her back um, before we, we do our outro. So let me see. Okay. Well, in the meantime, let me tell you a little bit about EduMatch. Um, so EduMatch is a project that was founded back in September, and pretty much uh, we, we do so many things together. We tweet together. We have a Twitter chat um, going on Sunday nights, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with the hashtag EduMatch. Um, in addition, there is a Google Hangout running simultaneously, and this gets archived to, uh, to iTunes. So if you have podcasts, if you have the podcast app available um, on your phone, then you can just download our EduMatch podcast and uh, keep up with us. In addition, we are always looking for guest bloggers. So if you, uh, if you have a blog post that you would like to share uh, with us, and we will put it on our EduMatch site, EduMatch for the number four, education.com. Speaking of sites, we have another site where you can sign up to be the featured person of the day where we tweet out information about you over a 24-hour period. Um, so that is edumatch.education. So hopefully we'll see you there. Just let us know. Uh, send me a, a message if you'd like to join our Voxer group, which gets bigger every single day. And it's just such great conversations from all of the dynamic individuals who are part of that. Um, so I see that Leslie is back, I believe. So, uh, Leslie, are you there? Can you hear us? Okay, not just yet. All right. Um, definitely wanted to give a huge shout out to Craig Kemp and Rob, Rob McTaggart for the Uber Edu list that we uh, that we collaborated on back in fall of uh, 2014. So, pretty much that list uh, allows you, if you have your own passion pitch that you uh, that you, that might you might have brewing in your mind, then just Check the hashtag UberEDU, and it'll take you. Um, it'll give you information about different projects that people have pitched. So that is bit.ly forward slash UberEDU list. So <laughs> I see that we have Leslie back. So Leslie, are you with us? Can you can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Perfect, 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 perfect. So I'm glad that everything worked out. So we're going to. Go ahead and have you take us home. So Leslie is an instructional coach and Google education trainer. She's passionate about lifelong learning, teaching, educational technology, world traveling, and her family. So Leslie, could you um, go ahead and tell us all about your passion? Can't wait to hear it. Yes. Um, my passion is traveling. My dad was in the Army, and we moved a lot, so I was able to live in New New York, we lived in Turkey for two years, and I think as a result of that, I kind of have a restless spirit. About seven or eight years ago, I started a student travel program at the high school I worked at, and since then, I've had the opportunity to take students to seven different countries. It is absolutely phenomenal when you're teaching British literature and you're talking about the, um, Shakespeare and his works and then you have students in your class who had the opportunity to go to Shakespeare's house. So, you know, as I've, be I've left the classroom, so now I'm thinking, how can I still continue to work with students and get them to see the world? Because a lot of our kids don't have the opportunity to go anywhere beyond their hometown. They go off to college and then they start their lives. Well, I came up with this project that would get about five or six teachers from anywhere in the world and they could bring five or six students. We decide on a destination and before we ever get there, the students will work on a collaborative project. They can do blogging, they can do Google Hangouts, just so that they get to know each other. If you've ever taken students on a trip before, you know that they don't get to know each other until probably about the fourth or fifth day of the trip, and then after about five more days, you're gone. So now I'd like for the students to get to know each other before they ever leave their home. Then we get to the destination, and that's where the real fun starts. We do sightseeing. We will, if you're familiar with Ingress, it's an augmented reality kind of game, and there are portals all over the world. We can do some ingress activities, we can do Google Hangouts, the kids are still going to have the opportunity to do blogging, and while we're in whatever country we're in, I'm real big on volunteering in my community, and I think that if we take these students somewhere that we should do some kind of community service project, and depending on the time of year, it could be, you know, something at a school, a community food bank, but I think that 
I, I'm just of the opinion everybody should do something to give back. So that would be a big part of the trip. And again, we're still collaborating. So we're going to be broadcasting our Google Hangouts all over so that people can see what it's like. And I would like for this to be an ongoing project. My Twitter handle, I can be found on Twitter at Ms. Fagan, F A G I N. I have. Um, I'm on Twitter all the time, I'm in the Voxer group, and I also have a blog, MissFagan.wordpress.com. So if you're interested or you would like more information, shoot me a message and hopefully this is something that we can get off the ground. Thanks. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Leslie. That is, that is fantastic. And the fact that you are encouraging um, students to collaborate along global lines, wow, just just totally amazing and I want to give Leslie another shout out because she uh, submitted a guest blog post for us very recently at edumatch4education.com so doubt about uh, PD I want it my way I think that's what it was called reminds me of Frank Sinatra yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so excellent excellent so definitely wanted to thank everybody for tuning in and wanted to thank everybody uh, who submitted a passion pitch these were so great I'm fired up ready to go Wanted to thank Shelly for uh, this opportunity to uh, to to have our EduMatch Passion Pitch Day, as well as the rest of the 30 Goals Conference team. So thank you all so much. Um, enjoy the rest of your conference, and we might be seeing each other again, maybe on Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and um, kick it back over to Shelly, um, just so that she can take us home. So thank you all so much. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit mess now. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. That was really incredible. Um, because I was screen sharing, it was hard to get the their projects out, but they are on the schedule, um, and then we're, they're going to be on the site in a little bit, along with the video, because that's how great Google is. So um, please join their projects, check them out, and try a collaboration, and don't forget to fill in the attendance form, because remember, um, each session you do the attendance form means that you get entered into win really awesome prizes. So thank you all so much and thanks to Sarah. You were amazing, Sarah. You were awesome. Thank you so much, Shelly. So appreciate it. So everybody enjoy the rest of your night. <laughs> See you all tomorrow uh, with um, Sue Waters. She's opening us up. <laughs>